start enjoying everyday life. Are you living a mediocre life? I believe to be excellent means that you take what you have and you do the best you can with it. Next on Enjoying Everyday Life, learn how to maximize your gifts and talents to reach your full potential. Whatever you pursue in your life is what you're going to have. If you're a lazy man and you pursue nothing, then nothing is exactly what you're going to have. If you're a mediocre man, you maybe have a little something, but mediocrity is halfway between failure and success. <laughs> and most people are mediocre. Most people would choose what's behind door number two. We're playing spiritual, let's make a deal this weekend. What is behind door number one? What is behind door number two? And what's behind door number three? Because you see, God sets before us not only just good things, but He gives us choice. I set before you life and death, choose life. There's good things out there, there's bad things out there. God could remove all the bad, but for His own purpose, He permits the enemy to bring opposition, so we choose our destiny. Matter of fact, I believe that one of the main things that causes us to be created in the image of God, or the one of the main things that means when the Bible says that we are created in the image of God is that we really are free. We're free to make our own choices. We don't just live by instinct like some animals do where we're just born to do certain things and that's what we're going to do and we'll never do anything else. We choose. Jesus chooses us, but then we have to choose to accept what the Word of God says. People choose all kinds of lifestyles. They choose all kinds of professions. And people choose what kind of person they're going to be. And I hope that this has a major impact, not only on the people in this conference this weekend, but people all over the world, to realize that wherever you're at right now in your life, you're living the result of your choices. And if you want your life to change, then your choices have to change. Because you can't just pray away your problems without changing your behavior. Amen? You say, well, my problems aren't my fault. Somebody else mistreated me. Well, I do agree that as children, other people make choices for us that sometimes cause us to have unfortunate situations that we can't do anything about at the time. But just because you started out somewhere doesn't mean you have to end up there. And for a lot of years, I was very concerned about my poor beginning, but I've since found out that it's how I finish that's really important, not how I began. And so even if you had a lazy parent that taught you to be lazy, that doesn't mean you can't fight your way out of that and become something better. Matter of fact, I believe God always wants us to outshine the last generation. I hope my children do something greater than what I've done. Amen? And I hope my grandchildren do something greater than what my children are doing. If you're a mediocre man, which is the guy we're going to talk about tonight, then, you know, you may think you're okay, and that's probably the most dangerous thing about being mediocre because most of the world is, and so after all, you're as good as everybody else. But the point is, is you're not better than anybody else. And I don't believe that God called us 
to be lazy. I don't believe he called us to be mediocre. I believe that we have an excellent God. Amen. And if we're going to be like him, and if we're going to represent him, then I don't see how we can represent him with anything other than excellence in our life. And this thing that I'm talking to you about affects every area of our life. In Proverbs it says, I will open my mouth for excellent things. Excellence is seen in our conversation. It's seen in how we dress. It's seen in how we take care of our personal grooming. It's seen in how we take care of our homes and our automobiles. It's seen in how we treat people. It's seen in what kind of a job we do while we're at work. And behind every one of these choices, there's a certain kind of a result that you're going to get. If I'm a lazy man, I'm not going to like my life. Because the Bible says a lazy man ends up in poverty. He never has anything. And everything he does have is in complete ruins. Everything around him is falling down and caving in. His whole life has decay on it. And he usually blames all of his problems on somebody else, and he's jealous of everything that everybody else has, but he doesn't want to get up and do anything. He wants them to fix everything. Well, I wish they would do something. You know what I found out that was kind of shocking to me? We are they. <laughs> you have to listen to yourself sometimes. Well, I wish they'd fix the air conditioning in here. Well, maybe if you gave more money at church, they could fix it. Who knows? <laughs> well, I wish they'd expand the parking lot. Well, I wish they had more comfortable chairs. Well, I wish they this, and I wish they that, and I wish something else, and I wish the government would do this, and I wish this, and I wish that. Wishbone will not get you anywhere. You've got to have backbone. <laughs> We've all got a wishbone, but... I'm not where I'm at today because of wishbone. I didn't overcome my problems that I had as a result of 15 years of abuse by wishing things would change. I had to take hold of the truth that's in here and I had to not just hear it, I had to apply it to my life day after day after day after day after day after day after year after year, circumstance after circumstance, situation after situation. I had to learn not to do what I felt like doing, but I had to learn to do what the Word of God told me to do. Amen. The Bible says we're to be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. Because if we only hear the Word, what, you know, what good is that going to do us? And see, a lot of people really, they get the wrong mentality about even coming to conferences like this. They don't even come with the intent in mind to change. They come hoping to hear something that's going to make their problem disappear. Now, I want you to get this tonight. Do you come just hoping to hear something that's going to make your problem disappear? Or did you come here tonight saying, God, there's things I want changed in my life, and I believe for the things to change, I've got to change. So I hope Joyce tells me something that's going to help me change. That's really important. Don't even listen to me tonight without a mindset of being willing to go home and change. Don't be thinking about all the lazy people you know that you wish would have been here tonight. <laughs> and don't even sit there and think, well, I'm not lazy. You know what? I, I mean, I would have tendencies toward being a workaholic, but we've all got areas in our life where we're lazy. You might be a hard worker at work and be spiritually lazy. Or you might be spiritually on fire, but, you know, your house is filthy. Oh, we won't go there. <laughs> At least not yet, anyway. And you know, if, if you're a mediocre man, I mean, if you just, you know, choose this lifestyle, just, well, you know, status quo, average, what everybody else does, float downstream with all the other do-nothings that are going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm not too bad. I'm not any worse than anybody else. How many of you know that attitude? Well, you know, everybody else does it. I mean, I can go see this movie. Everybody else sees it. All the Christians I know see it. 
Well, too bad. Would Jesus see it? You may not like everything I say this weekend because it's probably going to mess with your lifestyle. But see, here's what happens. If I choose this lifestyle, then I've taken the easy way, but I'm back here all my life never being satisfied, never fulfilled, never really happy, always looking for something else so I can be content. You know why I say that? I don't believe that any person can ever really be really fulfilled and satisfied unless they are being the best they can be. Did you hear me? We've got to choose to be excellent. And I tell you, you'll see as we go through the weekend, I mean the radical, outrageous blessings that come to the man or woman who will choose to be excellent. Now let me tell you something. An excellent person does what's right when nobody's looking. They don't just do what's right when somebody's watching them. They do what's right when nobody's around because they have the revelation. An excellent man has the revelation that God sees everything. And he knows that he lives before the all-seeing eye who's everywhere all the time. And he realizes that everything that's done in secret will eventually come out into the open. And that the God who sees in secret rewards us in the open. And I don't believe that we're just rewarded for our good deeds. I believe that there comes a time of justice where we reap whatever we have sown. I'm glad to say that after God worked with me for a good number of years and I didn't start out here, I probably was never too lazy, but I was definitely mediocre and middle of the road and whatever everybody else did. But God began to teach me early on in my ministry about excellence and integrity. Matter of fact, he said, if you want to have a successful ministry, you have to be a person of integrity and you have to do what you do with excellence. And so we have listened to what God told us and we've never backed off of that. And we've, got a lot, we've had a lot of opposition about it because I found out that not everybody wants to be excellent and they don't like it if you push them toward excellence. They want the results of being excellent, but they don't want to do the, the time. But I'm happy to say that we have chosen excellence and it means a lot to us. And I'm happy to tell you that I love my life. Amen. I don't know how in the world I could be any more blessed. You say, well, that's easy for you to say. You're a big TV preacher. Oh, come on, give me a break. God is no respecter of persons. He lays down a set of guidelines and they're for whosoever will. But the problem is not very many people will. Amen? Many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, what, in the ministry? Yes. Let's just say many are called to the higher life. But most people choose the lower life. Because most people live by feelings. They don't ever understand that to have what God wants you to have, you've got to realize how fickle your feelings are and that your feelings will not help you do much that's right. Your feelings don't get excited about discipline and neither do mine. No discipline for the present seems joyous. Nevertheless, later on it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those that have been trained by it. We need people that care more about later on than right now. If you don't like something that's going on in your life, I'm telling you right now, you can find a way in the Bible to change it. But it won't just come because some angel flies out of heaven and, and readjusts your life. You're going to find something in here that's a principle that you're going to need to apply over and over. And if you're determined enough and you won't back off of it, then pretty soon you'll start reaping a better harvest in your life. 
And to me, it's exciting to realize that there's nothing in my life that's not subject to change. Everything in my life can change except God, and He will never change. He's the same yesterday. I can change. My family can change. My finances can change. My body can change. Everything can change. Doesn't always just change for the better. Sometimes it can change for the worse because not only do we need to get things right, we need to keep them right. The Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free, and do not be ensnared again in a yoke of bondage which you've once put off. I like to teach a principle of gain and maintain. In other words, when you, when you work with the Holy Spirit and you see some changes come in your life, then don't just get an attitude that you don't need to do any maintenance in that area, because if you do, you'll backslide. It's like you don't just one time have a good marriage and because you one time had a good marriage, keep a good marriage all your life. Dave and I have been married almost 35 years and we, we work at our marriage. We make sure we spend right time together. We make sure we talk to each other. We make sure we compliment each other. I do things for Dave. Dave does things for me. You've got to feed relationships. Just because you had a good friend once, you won't always keep a good friend if you don't feed the relationship. Just because you're born again, you won't grow if you don't feed your spirit. If you gave birth to a baby and you didn't feed that baby, that baby would die. When you're born again, you're a new, you're a new Christian, and so you have to feed your spirit. And, and the Word of God is food for your spirit. Well, obviously, you're doing that because you're here tonight. But how many millions are watching by television that want a great life, but you don't even know ten scriptures? You want the devil to leave you alone, but when he comes around to pester you, you're so lazy, you won't even open your mouth and speak one scripture. <laughs> I mean, the least you can do is learn one little scripture, John 8, 44, the devil's a liar. And if you can't manage to do anything else, when he comes and tells you you're going to fail at everything, you're no good, you're worthless, everybody hates you, nobody likes you, at least you can open your mouth and say, devil, you're a liar. We don't have any trouble getting our mouth open to say the wrong things. The Bible says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But how many people watching right now, or maybe even in here, you suffer from depression, but would you sing a song when you felt depressed? No. And why not? Because you don't feel like it. <laughs> You're too lazy to sing. <laughs> I'm depressed. Put on means just what it says. It means put on. <laughs> this jacket didn't jump off the hanger and get onto my body. I wanted to wear it over here and I had to put it on. Put on the garment of praise. And it will replace the spirit of heaviness. That's Bible. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I've given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Bible says put on love. I don't always feel like loving people. Love is not a feeling. It's a choice that you make. Forgiving people is not a feeling, it's a choice that you make. Praying for your enemies is not something you do because you feel like it. You do it because the Bible says to do it. This may be better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> We're going to talk a little more about laziness sometime this weekend. I won't tell you when because if I do, the lazy people won't come back. But tonight I want to talk about mediocrity. Because you know what? Mediocrity and messes go together. Mediocrity means average. Moderate to low in quality. And you know, average is very acceptable in our society. But I'm very sure standing here tonight that it is not applauded in heaven. I don't think the angels clap for us when we choose to just float along with all the rest of the crowd. We do not serve an average God. 
and I, for one, am not going to be average. You see, even in saying that, I can feel that there's people thinking, well, what's wrong with that? I'm trying to break you out of that mentality. Well, everybody can't be excellent at everything. We're not talking about gifts here. I believe to be excellent means that you take what you have and you do the best you can with it. I'm not asking you to take what somebody else has and do the best that you can with it. Just take whatever you've got and do the best you can with it. I'd like to have nice, long, thick hair with a little bit of natural curl to it. But I don't, and I never will. Maybe in heaven, but not here. So I take mine, and I do the best I can with it. I put gel, I put mousse, I put spray, spritz, freeze, <laughs> keep it about that long, and we get by. <laughs> and you know something? One of the things that's wrong with a lot of people is they, they never get around to being excellent with what they've got because they're not, they, just, they don't want what they have. They want what somebody else has got, but you're not going to have what somebody else has got, so you better start doing something with what you got. I want you to remember that whatever you pursue in life is what you're going to get. So make sure that you really want what you're going after. I believe that we should pursue excellence and that we should do what's right, especially we should do what's right when nobody is looking. Make the hard choice to give up mediocrity and pursue an excellent life. I really want you to take advantage of the resource offered today, which is pursuing excellence and integrity. I really believe when you make the choice to become a, an excellent person that it's a life-changing time. I mean, a time in your life that is so important, I don't even know how to tell you how important it is. I've had people listen to my teaching tapes on excellence and tell me that was life-changing for me. I didn't realize how mediocre I was. We also have a five-part series that's talking about integrity and John Maxwell's book, Thinking for a Change. I tell you, between my tapes and his book, you've got to be ready to come up higher. Every day, you have a choice. Whether to be lazy, mediocre, or excellent. Wherever you are today, it's the result of the choices that you've made in the past. I will walk in integrity. I will do what is right before my God, and I will live before Him with a blameless heart. Pursuing Excellence and Integrity, a five-part series by Joyce Meyer. For a limited time when you request this series, we'll also send you John Maxwell's influential book, Thinking for a Change, as a very special bonus gift. This series, along with your free bonus book, make an excellent gift for anyone in leadership of any kind. To order Pursuing Excellence and Integrity and the free bonus gift, Thinking for a Change, simply contact us at Joyce Meyer Ministries using the information on your screen or log on to JoyceMeyer.org. Hi, I'm Ginger Stocky, senior producer at Joyce Meyer Ministries. Put yourself in the place of the people devastated by the tsunami in Southeast Asia for just a moment and your heart swells with compassion. This disaster destroyed entire families and left survivors homeless and frightened. Since the beginning, Joyce Meyer Ministries has been on the scene with disaster relief. Scott Norling, who runs the Ministries India Outreach, is overseeing the relief efforts. Some of the areas affected by the tsunami waves are back over here, accessible only by boats like the one I'm riding on now. Literally over 500 people have lost their lives in this Kudalore area. Ministry teams are spread throughout Southeast Asia, providing food, medical supplies, clothing, blankets, and the love of Christ. We're also supplying spiritual food with Joyce's books, Why God Why, Peace and Love. We're here on behalf of Joyce Meyer Ministries to help rebuild the lives, to rebuild these homes, to bring hope to a desperate and hurting people here that have been devastated by the tsunami waves. On behalf of Dave and Joyce, I invite you to join with us in this effort. Just a small donation can supply a family with an emergency package containing a small cook stove, rice, cooking utensils, clothing, and blankets. In some areas, families will also receive water and medications. If you would like your gift to go toward this effort, please designate it as disaster relief. You can help people rebuild their lives with hope for the future. Thank you and God bless you.
I'm putting out fires all day long. If I want to get home, I like to make some fire of my own. There's more to most people than meets the eye. Just like in the monthly magazine from Joyce Meyer. Inside, you'll find tons of new and interesting features, including articles, interviews, and fascinating stories of people who have discovered how to enjoy every day of their lives. You'll find tips on how to overcome problems, and you'll learn how the Word of God can come alive to you on a daily basis. Look inside and join everyday life today. To get your free subscription, just call and request and join Everyday Life magazine. Joyce Meyer believes that God has a future and purpose for your life and that you have an incredible destiny. Your monthly partnership plays an important key to that destiny as Joyce can impact your life on a regular basis, giving you new insights and information into God's Word through television, teaching tapes, our magazine, monthly letters, and more. Plus, when you join us in partnership, you're playing a vital role in making a difference in the lives of millions of people around the world. So call or write us and help us take this life-changing message to every nation, every city, every day. Plus, if you have any needs or prayer requests, please let us know and we'll agree with you for God to make a difference. We also encourage you to check out our website at www.joycemeyer.org where you can find important ministry updates, access Joyce's teaching resources, her travel schedule, visit our online bookstore, and more. So contact us today as you continue the journey enjoying everyday life. It's time to start enjoying.